What's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jellicent and I'm going to be talking about my matchup for week number 4 of season number 3 in the Ultimate Battle League. My opponent this week is Skyrander, coach of the Scandinavian Stoutlands. I don't know too much about him, but I do know he won the D-League for the UBL, so we definitely have our work cut out for us, especially considering the matchup. You can see his roster over on the right of your screen, and let's go ahead and talk about it. He has Kieran Black right here. I think Choice Scarf and Assault Vest make the most sense. Choice Scarf for speed control can easily clean without rage. I think his secondary coverage will be like Earth Power, which can go ahead and break through my Rotom Heat's Levitate and go ahead and Oko with that, so... Just gotta keep that in mind. Ice Beam is definitely something he wants too for my Hippowdon. The other set that would make sense is Assault Vest, which can go ahead and sponge hits for Manaphy. He could even take like a max special attack Draco for my Mega Latios if he puts the correct investment into an Assault Vest set. So just gotta keep that all in mind. Kiram Black is not a Pokemon that I'm switching into at all. Another Pokemon that I don't really switch into is Zeraora. I think that Grass Knot Knockoff Volt Switch Plasma Fists makes a lot of sense right here. He can put Close Combat on there if he wants to, you know, handle my Cobalion better. And he can just go ahead and take off Grass Knot or Volt Switch but his error aura, just got to make sure I have speed control for it and, you know, just waste or revenge it reliably. You know, if I don't have waste or revenge that thing, it's just going to outpace everything and be a huge threat. He has Gyarados right here. I don't think Gyarados should come. I have easy speed control and pivots into a Dragon Dance set. Like Fizz Def Man, if he can just go ahead and take on Gyarados just fine. And I really don't think that, you know, the Dragon Dance set makes a lot of sense right here. I guess like Dragon Dance Z Bounce can go ahead and break through my Manaphy if he can get Stealth Rocks up. But his Stealth Rocks options are very limited, as you guys will see when I talk about those right here. So... Gyarados is kind of an unbring the way I see it. Chandelier is a third Pokemon I do not switch into right here. The dual stab rips my team apart. I think Choice Specs does make a lot of sense as a wall breaker against Pokemon like Spit of Hip Poudon, which, you know, it's still going to get to it KO'd by Specs Energy Ball or Fire Blast. So that's very scary right there. Ideally, if he's Fire Blast, he misses some, but, you know, I'm not even bringing Hippo, so that's kind of out of the picture right here. Choice Specs, Chandelier, and Absolute that right here. Gardevoir is another Pokemon with its dual stab that I don't really switch into. I think Double Scarf makes a lot of sense right here. Scarf Gardevoir plus Scarf. Kieran Black can just provide all the speed control he really wants. And then he can bring some breakers like Specs Chandelure, Zeraora, and then some endgames like, you know, Curse or SD Mega Scissor, which I will talk about later. But I think Scarf Gardevoir does make a lot of sense right here. Assault Vest can be cool to better pivot into Pokemon like my Mega Latios. If he invests that properly, it can go ahead and take two Shadow Balls, which is very important right here. It is pressured a lot, though, by Pokemon like my Crobats, you know, Poison or Brave Bird attacks, and then Cabalion's Iron Head. So, not quite sure what route he wants to go with Gardevoir, but Choice Scarf does make a lot of sense the way I see it. He has Beware, which Beware, I'm not really too worried about. It does, you know, sponge a lot of hits due to its Fluffy. It can take hits from my Weavil as well as my Hippowdon and even my Granville very well, but those aren't really my biggest threats right here. I definitely think it's going to be too pressured by Pokemon like Mega Latios, Manaphy, as well as, you know, Crobat, which even Flying Stab through the Fluffy is going to be doing a lot right here. So I don't really see Beware coming, but Assault Vest could be cool to better sponge hits from those Pokemon being, you know, Manaphy and Mega Latios. Gligar is another Pokemon he has. This is his first of two Stealth Rockers. He has this and then he has Burp Barricade for Stealth Rock, so I think Gligard is interesting. He has to fear, like, you know, a taunt for Mecha Balion if he wants to go ahead and get up rocks with this. I think Defog is a good option on this too, just because he's really weak to Hazard Stack. This is one of his two Defoggers, I believe. The other, well, one of three. He has Skuntank and Mega Scissor, but I really think, like, Earthquake, Knockoff, U Turn, and then Defogger Rocks makes the most sense if Gligard wants to come at all, but I don't think it showed. It's offensively pressured by Ice Beam from Latios and Manaphy. He has Virizion right here, which Virizion has an interesting matchup because I have, you know, thought about bringing Rendo Berry on my Manaphy in the past weeks, and I could easily just do that and then run, like, Tail Glow plus Dazzling Gleam, Ice Beam, or even, you know, Psychic, and just blow away the Virizion, so I don't know if he wants to actually bring the Virizion or not. It is a Z-Move user, though. I actually have to check if it gets any, like, weather boosting, you know, like, speed boosting Z-Moves. That could actually be a cool endgame for him that I didn't really take into mind, so I do have speed control for that, though, as you guys will see when I go over my team right here, but just gotta keep Virizion Z-Moves into mind. SD is a very possible ring. Even with the Koba Berry, it's not taking a Brave Bird for my Crobat, so I don't have to fear that at all. Barbarical is a very niche bring right here. I don't think it's a bring at all, just because even after a Shell Smash, a lot of my best Scarfers will go ahead and outpace that, and as a Stealth Rocker, it's really not getting up rocks and a lot of stuff. Even like, even though it pressures my Rotom Heat with Water Stab, it's just getting pressured back by the Electric Stab. I can just Volt Switch out on that, so I don't think Barbarical is a strong ring at all. He has Skuntank, which Skuntank is a second day Defogger right here. I actually think like a Fizz Def Assault Vest Skuntank to take on both Megalodies, Earthquake, and its special moves is a very solid bring right here. You can also go ahead and take on my Weavile relatively nicely right here. So I do think Skuntank is a strong bring in that regard. 
However, it's really not contributing too much to my Cabalion. I guess it does get Flamethrowers, right? I guess Choice Scarf, Kieran Black would be the best thing. It could go ahead and, you know, pressure both my Cabalion with Flamethrower as well as my Grand Bull with the Poison and Fire type move. So that's just something I have to keep in mind. And then finally, Mega Scissor right here. Which Mega Scissor, just got to make sure I have good checks so I can take Bullet Punch and hit it back with strong Fire type moves right here. Which I do. I mean, Manaphy resists it too. I don't even need Fire coverage of my Manaphy to be able to take on Mega Scissor right here. So that's great. Mega Scissor is a third Defogger. U turn momentum is absolutely scary though. Into those breakers being Kirin Black, Zerora, Chandelier, Gardevoir. I make sure to make sure those Pokemon don't constantly hit the field, and Mega Scissor is one of his best ways of trying to get them in, because they will force out my Mega Lati if, you know, he has the health to take an HP Fire, and just get in those threats. So that's going to be very scary, and yeah, that's going to be his team. Let's go ahead and talk about my six Pokemon. Okay, starting off my team right here, we have Pride the Cabalion, which is earning a Focus Sash set. In case it wasn't obvious, I'm indeed bringing Hyper Offense with Zero Switch into his team, because there's no point in trying to pivot into his Pokemon, it's not going to work. The game plan is get up rocks, outpace him, destroy his team, and overwhelm it as fast as we can right here. So, we have Taunt Rocks Cabalion. I actually don't have speed for the Virzion. I instead just went for speed against Kieran Black because the 100 HP investment actually allows me to take a fake out into a close combat from Zero or a lead, which would be, you know, great because getting up rocks is a big part of the game plan. I do have to be worried about taunt on Zero or though, so that's something I can't ignore, but in case he opts for fake out close combat as an anti lead, this can go ahead and sponge that hit and be good to go right here. Zero or is not a Z move Pokemon, so I don't have to worry about Z close combat coming out after the, you know, sash is broken from fake out, so that's definitely very good right here. Close combat. Combat and Iron Head is my best coverage against his team, just because it's able to go ahead and pressure Pokemon like Kieran Black, Gardevoir. I guess it is kind of set up fodder for Gyarados, but thankfully I do have Taunt right here, so I don't really have to worry about that setting up. I can Taunt the Mega Scissor to prevent it from SDing or defogging in front of this as a lead as well. So overall, I'm very happy with Pride the Cabalion's potential this week. I definitely think it's going to be a great rocker, and let's go ahead and talk about my Manaphy. Okay, moving right along right here, we have Ultimate by Manaphy, which is running a Wakan Berry set. Lots of speed, lots of HP, and a little bit of defense right here. This is my prep for Zeraora, just because I did mention its attacks don't really allow me to switch into it, so I can go ahead and sponge a Plasma Fist with this, and if I can go ahead and get that Tail Glow up as he tries to revenge me, I can knock him out with the plus 3 Surf right here. Reflect is great too, I can go ahead and, you know, take on Pokemon like Gyarados even better with the Reflect right here. I also love the fact that Wakanberry allows me to go ahead and take the Scarf Fusion Bolt from the Kirin Black, which I did mention is another big threat on his team. I do carry the Dazzling Gleam this week. Surf Dazzling Gleam, I think, hit everything, you know, the best right here. It also hits Virizion, which is very spit off, and I can go ahead and take that on as well. So, ideally, we don't miss out on coverage for anything. The one thing would be, like, a Salt Vest Zerora. If he does bring that, he will live the plus three Surf, which is unfortunate. The plan is to have Rocks up, by the way. If I don't have Rocks up, the plus three Surf is not knocking him out at all. But if I do get the Reflect up before the Zerora comes in, I'm definitely going to go ahead and 1v1 it right here. So, the main idea is Lurk here in Black, lure, lure the Zerora. I can even use this as a response to Gyarados and maybe even the Chandelure, depending on how, you know, offensive he is, because, you know, with HP, I can take two Shadow Balls or Energy Balls. He's not Specs, so that's the main idea with the Ultimate the Manaphy this week. Let's go ahead and talk about my main win condition. Okay, rounding out the first half of my team right here, we have Gateway, my Megalatios, which is my primary win condition, like I did mention. Just because it's hyper offense does not mean I don't have a game plan right here. Really quickly, just wanted to mention, I don't know why, but Reference here forced me to use the old individual valley system, which is why the screenshot for the IVs does look a little bit weird right here. They will all be 31 across the board when I do get a gen, and we will have max EVs in those stats, but Dragon Dance 3 attacks right here is what I brought last week, doing the exact same thing this week, because I didn't get to Dragon Dance sweep last week, unfortunately. We have Dragon Dance. Dragon Pulse is my best stab right here for Kieran Black. It also is our built-to-hit Gyarados. I unfortunately don't carry Thunderbolt this week, because I couldn't really afford the coverage. I wanted Earthquake just to go ahead and hit Pokemon like a Zeroer and Gardevoir harder, ensure that I can go ahead and pick up KOs on that, as well as Chandelure. So, this can easily rip through his team after I get up my rocks and get some stuff in range. I have to make sure that the Mega Scissor isn't very spit F, or, you know, I have to chip it down into range of HP Fire if it is right here. So, the one thing that might also take me on would be like Spit F Gligar because I don't have Ice Beam. So, just gotta scout out what he brings and make sure everything's in range and this can easily win the game at the end. Let's go ahead and talk about my Weavile. Okay, so this set right here is something I'm excited to go ahead and try on this Hyper F and Scout. We got Greed the Weavile, which is earning Sash counter and then dual stab attacks right here. Counter is great if he does bring Choice Scarf Cure in black, and I am in a tough spot. I can go ahead and counter that thing. Make sure if it's locked into Outrage, I do get rid of it right there. It can also take any hit from Gyarados, of course, and go ahead and counter that if Dragon Dance does get out of hand. Just gotta, of course, keep the substitute in mind. If he is already in range of Adam and Icicle Crash, which I can't afford to go ahead and run this week, I will go ahead and do that. Thankfully, even with, you know, max speed without the Adam and with the Adam and Nature, I can, you know, outrun the Virizion anyway, which is very great right here. This is also a mega 
like a scissor right here. If he bullet punches into me, I will live on Sash and go ahead and counter that. And that will very much help out my Mega Latios because HP Fire is not a guaranteed kill on that. And that is something that can go ahead and pressure me with the bullet punch. So, Greed the Weavile does have a very big role this week. Ideally, I can go ahead and pick up two KOs with it if possible because it revenges something and I can go ahead and counter whatever comes in after to revenge me. It can also go ahead and take on Zerora. So, should be a lot of fun right here. It's a second Focus Sash user. Let's go ahead and talk about my third Focus Sash user, my Selgor. Okay, my second to last Pokemon this week is Exceed, my Selgor, which is coming for the first time this season. We have a Focus Sash set. It is my third Focus Sash user on this Hyper Offense build. We have Final Gambit, Spikes, Hidden Power, Fire, and Bug Buzz. I did mention Spike stacking is a very vital part of my strategy, or Hazard stacking in general, just to wear stuff down for my Mega Latios endgame. Hidden Power, Fire is really just there in case Mega Scissor gets out of hand. I can go ahead and revenge it, take any sort of bullet punch no matter what, due to the Focus Sash, and you know, just because it's Hazard, is a really weak right here, he only has Rox on Gligar and Barbarical. I figure these Focus Sash users will be very good this week. We have Final Gambit, in case something does get out of hand, I do want to be able to just trade Pokemon. For example, if he brings a Modest Scarf Gardevoir and that's about to sweep my team, I can just go ahead and Final Gambit and trade these Pokemon, and we will go ahead and eliminate that win condition, which is absolutely great right here. Bug Buzz is mainly just my, you know, general stab for hitting Pokemon like Kieran Black and Zerora. I don't know why, once again, Draft Frontier is forcing me to do the old individual value system. It will be 31 across the when I get a gen and we will have max EVs in the special attack and the speed stat right here. Let's go ahead and talk about my final Pokemon. Alright, and rounding out the team right here, we have Labyrinth the Crobat, which is my choice scarf user this week. I did mention speed control is a big part of the game, and we have Adamant Scarf Bad right here. This is my speed control for Choice Scarf Gardevoir, Choice Scarf here in Black. The Dragon Nancy Gyarados, I can go ahead and outspeed if that is substitute. Infiltrator will be able to go ahead and break through that, so this is great right here. I do have Emergency Defog on this too, just because of all my Focus Sash users. If he does bring like Gligar or Barbarical and does manage to get Roxa past my Taunt Cabalion, I do want to make sure I can go ahead and Defog, despite how you know vital hazards are for me. I can't afford those Focus Sashes to be broken, so Defog is very useful right here. It's actually mixed. I do have Heat Wave on here, and then I have a Naughty Nature, which lowers my speed F, just because I do want to be able to Heat Wave these I can take a plus two bullet punch, you know, with my little bit of HP investment as well as my defense. Even after Stealth Rocks, and I can go ahead and Heat Wave and just knock out the Mega Scissor, which is great right here. So, ideally, this can be the speed control that I want, and maybe it can go even go ahead and late game clean if he gives me some of his flying resist, and I do have adequate hazards up. So, yeah, that will be my team. The match will be going live exactly 24 hours from when this video went live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. So, I hope you all are looking forward to it, and I will see you then. Later.